What's going on everyone, Juicebags here, and welcome back to some Dungeon Defenders 2. My uh, connection was a little spotty today, so no live stream today, so I figured I would put together another video. And this is one that has actually been being requested for a while. Um, this is actually the first way I did Chaos 10, just to show that it could be done on the day that it launched, and recognizing the fact that I am smashing a square peg through a round hole, let's just jump right into it. Now, first things first, tower defense games in general are strategy games, meaning there's some sort of strategic element or counter that you need to apply to the game to make it through. So if you're playing like Bloons Tower Defense and you've got a bunch of camo balloons coming and you have nothing to counter the camo balloons, you're just going to lose. If you have lead balloons coming and you have nothing to counter the lead balloons, you're just going to lose. Well, in Dungeon Defenders 2, we've got a pretty diverse loadout of uh, heroes, shards, defenses, mods, etc. And a lot of times people forget that it does have that strategic element. Now, in Chaos 9, one of the absolute beast mode metas is without a doubt the Fisher of Ember Mount. Uh, Ember Mount Flames just wrecks it. Uh, it allows that dot to stay up on 10 targets to tick all the way down the lane. So as those uh, super hard to kill enemies come down the lanes, you are the dot's just going to keep burning and you're going to get some wins. So Fisher Ember, Ember Mount for the win in Chaos 9, but we are here in Chaos 10. So a lot of times when going from one tier to the next, people want to try the exact same thing that worked in the previous tier. Now, this, of course, is kind of against the entire strategic element of the game. So let's take a look at what we've got in Chaos 10. Well, in Chaos 10, we've got cyborgs. So ground traps are as in nodes are not going to be what we want to use. Uh, additionally, we've got Frost Orcs, meaning that if we're going to use Ground Traps R as a Nodes, we really need to overcap the raid in them. So we've got an enemy that stuns Ground Traps R as a Nodes. We've got another enemy that freezes um, defenses in its area that has a Frost Aura that slows down defenses. So there's a lot of things we need to do, but we are determined to get this square peg through this round hole. So what are we going to do? Well, first off, we'll keep mass destruction, but let's get rid of everything else. So we know that we're going to need something to counter the cyborgs. Well, that would be automation, uh, tenacity or automation. It feels like it would be kind of a waste to throw a tenacity mod on your Fisher Ember Mounts. Uh, however, the automation shard will do the same thing for you. So you can get yourself automation in there and it will counter the cyborgs. Now, additionally, of course, we got Frost Orcs, so we need to overcap the rate. Now, I'm I'm going to be going way over cap. You don't need to take it to this point. You got to get to 100% rate combined. So, for example, you're getting 40% rate from your, your mod. Additionally, getting another 35% rate from your shard, or pardon me, from your ascension. So that's 75% rate. You need to get 25% more rate on it. So just a regular old uh, rate shard would get the job done. I just don't happen to have any. Actually, I got one right there. I'm going to throw this one in anyway because I don't want to dump gold into that one. Um, a regular rate shard would get the job done. Um, we're going to go overboard, which is completely unnecessary. Now, in the uh, spirit of smashing the square peg through the round hole, uh, we are going to go right up to the door because, you know, if you lock yourself out of your house, there is no reason to pick the lock when you can smash the front door down. So let's go ahead and uh, let's actually start way over here and kind of build around as we go. Uh, we are going to go uh, a couple of fissures. Uh, let's go with four of them. Uh, we want to get destructive pile out on these bad boys. So let's throw down a frost strike aura. And then we want to get a boost aura in. Now, this boost aura is going to end up getting disabled when the cyborgs come out because I am not going to put automation on it. Now, I do have another automation. I probably should just put it on there. 
Um, but I'm just not going to sweat it. Now, the Frost Strike Aura here with our Destructive Pylon, that's going to get disabled as well, but the Destructive Pylon is still going to work. And that's the main reason that it is there. So we got our Fissures protected versus Cyborgs and versus the Frost Orcs. The support stuff is going to come and go as the lane progresses. Uh, let's go ahead and do the same thing right here. We'll go uh, for Fissures. Let's get our Frost Strikes in and our Boostara. Once again, rinse and repeat. Same thing. Oops. Let's go uh, Frost Strike instead. And a Boostara. All right, we're looking pretty good. So these lanes are pretty well secured. Now uh, let's go over and get this one. Um, Let's try something like four fishers. <laughs> uh, we'll get our destructive pilot in and a, a boost aura. Now I do this particular map just kind of for fun. Um, what I'm saying here is don't use fishers. Don't be the guy that smashes the square peg through the round hole, y'all. I mean, if you want to do it just because you can do it, then, you know... Go ahead and do it. That's why I'm doing it right here, just to show you that you can. But uh, let's go and round it out, and then I don't think we're going to have enough DU. What do we got? Yeah, we're not going to have enough DU to do that full setup over here. So what we'll do, uh, the enemies here are going to split. The ones that come this way are going to go through these fissures anyway. Uh, the ones that come this way, however, uh, are going to be unprotected. So let's just put that additional fissure on that side. Uh, and then we'll still do everything else the same way. Now, with this in mind, we got very little um, flyer protection in. We got, yeah, I was 10 DU short of doing the full enchilada. So let's just go ahead and throw another Frost Strike here to give us a little CC, a little last resort CC uh, from the flyers or anything that's going to push through. Now, without a doubt, some enemies are going to push through. And you know what? I probably will just get way better results um, on that Boostara if I, uh, oops, wrong one. If I get rid of um, a vamp and go with, um, let's go with the automation there as well. So now our Boostara will be protected as well um, versus those cyborgs. And let's, uh, we got 200 left. Let's just save it and let it fly. Uh, without a doubt, Chieftains are going to push through the mix. Now, obviously, this is a Chaos 10 Fisher, so uh, the Chieftains, uh, some Zerks will push through. Not much else is going to push through, though. Um, it's all getting it done here. You see Cyborg. Cyborgs are the lowest IQ mob in the game, without a question. So here come our Chieftain down now. Now, luckily... The Chieftain have already burned their buff, so, you know, a little hero damage, and those guys are just going to die off. So, no issue there at all. Here comes some more Zerks. Uh, they're going to get burned off by the rest of that uh, Ember Mount Flames mod. That's the real benefit of using those in, um, in Chaos 9, is you got basically the entire lane... Uh, for the enemy to run for that that uh, mod to sit there and take damage, which it is quite powerful in that regard. Let's see, we got one more chieftain, and then I think the only big challenge we'll have left is the flyers. Looks like the frost strikes are doing pretty good on keeping the flyers down, uh, but you know, let's just help them out. Make it all run a little bit smoother. All right, we got those flyers. Let's get these guys. Flyers are all down. Couple more. And uh, there we go. Now, as we get upgrades on, of course, the build is going to get more and more powerful. We're still going to have to deal with the Chieftain. Uh, pretty much, I think, for the entire map. Uh, we're going to have to see how that goes. I'll probably have enough mana here maybe to upgrade everything once. 
Uh, we're going to have to see how that is. And then, uh, you know, as we get upgrades in, we've got a larger hammer smashing on that square peg. Trying to get through that round hole. <laughs> Let's see. Nope, not quite enough juice to hit everything. Of course, always one short, right? Go ahead and let it fly and see if it does how it does with one round of upgrades. Uh, of course, the more upgrades we get in, the better off we're going to be. Uh, seems like stuff's burning off pretty quick. The sooner we get the chieftains to pop their buff, the better off we are. So if we can get those guys popping their buff right up front, then it's pretty much GG's. Uh, we got this one rolling through. Actually, that one may have died. Is this one going to die off? Yeah, it looks like with a round of upgrades in, we're able to get it done here. Now, the benefit you get out of doing something like this is you're straight up spawn camping. You know, with the exception of those stragglers that make it through, you're just spawn camping the lanes. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to make the map run quick. Uh, additionally, in most cases, builds like this are super, super fast to build. Uh, if you got your deck set up and you're not swapping heroes and you just go through and um, spam the build down, you can build even like this map with a whole lot of lanes. You can build it real, real fast. There's no doubt about it. Uh, Siege Roller is down. We got all the swarms of flyers rolling in and pretty much a good game. So it's getting it done. Now, let's go ahead and bounce on forward now to wave number five and see what this looks like after we've got uh, the pretty much the entire map worth of upgrades out there. And then uh, we'll check out the boss lane. Uh, without a doubt, we're going to have to kill all the bosses manually, I believe. Uh, however, it's going to get the job done. It's still going to work now. If you wanted to do a safer version of this build, then of course you would use walls, uh, less fissures, and then have like one fissure back at the wall for anything that does make it through. And then that is going to uh, give you kind of your safety net. And that would actually be a, a much, much safer build for countering Chaos 10. But as far as that straight hammer time, we are going to get it done here. So... Let's uh, get on through this one and check out wave number five. And here we go in wave number five. Now, uh, I just, you know, obviously just upgraded the fissures. I, I don't have any of them anywhere throughout the map uh, fully upped. Uh, I've just been kind of spreading the spreading the love around a little bit. But uh, let's see. Do we get a little bit more in there? Let's throw a couple here. We'll uh, throw a couple of here. Not quite enough. We can get uh, we can get another upgrade there. There we go. And let's uh, let it fly here. We got a slick Kelly on to start things off. Uh, we got the Orc Warlord. Now let's see how the Warlord does. Uh, the Warlord is done with his heal. He's hitting. The the warlord spawned in the lane where he's got to go through two sets of fissures. Oh no! Now he's got uh, he's popped his uh, super chieftain business. Well, let's see. Is he actually gonna? Yeah, looks like it uh, got through the warlord. Now we got lucky. He spawned in a lane where he had two sets of fissures to run through. Uh, definitely helped things out quite a bit. Uh, I don't believe. Um, I don't believe the bosses are, are gonna die. I I really don't think so. I mean, we'll we'll see how it goes here, but get this dragon lord all uh, slapped up a little bit. And yeah, it's pretty much just watching the stragglers and see how it goes. Most of them, most of the chieftains are dying now, uh, just from having a few upgrades in. We get a little bit more power out of the deal. And um, to be honest, the sketchiest thing so far has been the Flyers. So, you know, obviously we don't have anything really specific for the Flyers. The Frost Strike Rs are, are helping out quite a bit there, for sure. But uh, the Flyers definitely need a little manual loving, without question.
Quibs die? Yeah, he died. And not too shabby, really. I mean, we made it through there. So, um, anyway, don't take this video the wrong way, y'all. If you all want to smash square pegs through round holes, get after it. You know, everyone should play the game that's the most fun for them. Uh, however, just recognize that there is a strategic value to the game. And if you do follow the strategic counters, you might find your experience a little bit easier uh, without just the whole Hawk Smash thing all the time. So it depends on how you want to play the game. And do you want to play it by using your head or do you want to play it by using brute force? Uh, which is it going to be for you? Uh, no wrong answer, of course. We all play games the way we want. But let's see what happens here. I'm not super optimistic. But you never know. They're definitely not burning fast. Is the monk dead? The monk is almost to half. So yeah, I better, I better put a little bit of action in here on this guy. All right, we got the monk down. It looks like the apprentice is going to die on their own. How's the squire doing? The squire's still pretty thick as well. Let's get uh, get a little help on him. And is that it? Yeah, there we go. We got the W. So uh, the Fisher's Ember Mount, absolute beast mode meta in Chaos Nine. Not really the intended use for Chaos Ten. Uh, however, if you jump through the hoops and you change the shards and do the things, uh, anything's possible in Dungeon Defenders 2. But that will get it for this episode. Thanks an absolute ton for watching, and I will see you next time around. Take it easy.